Hey everybody, welcome to this introduction to k-means clustering. This is just going to be a brief explanation of k-means clustering and what k-means clustering entails so that we can get a better understanding of k-means clustering and the overall idea behind the method. So first let's look into clustering. So clustering, we just really need to think of it as grouping. Like we're grouping the data points in a data set together and we're just looking for similarities within that data. And the reason we're doing this is so that we can find these hidden trends or the hidden information in the data that we might not be able to see just with our eyes or by using other methods. So as we can see in this picture down here, this is something that I really like. And we have all these data points right here. And then what clustering is going to do is it is going to group all of these together into similar, into similar traits, similar data points, similar characteristics that the data has so that we have these different groups of and different clusters. So really just when you're thinking of clustering, just think of it as grouping. And k-means clustering, so k-means clustering is actually a method of clustering and it's probably the most popular one, the one that most people know about. It is an unsupervised learning method so we have no class labels or we don't have any previous information about the data or we don't have any sort of previous label of the data like we don't know if which group it belonged to first and the reason it's so popular is because it's really easy to understand and implement and the k really just means that we're grouping the data into a k number of groups so in k-means clustering we set the k number of groups and we're just going to group the data into that many clusters, essentially. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to determine a number of centroids that we want to create and then create clusters around those centroids. So a centroid essentially is just the center of a cluster. And really every data point is going to be assigned to the nearest cluster. And the cluster is going to be the mean of all of the data points around it. That's why it's called k-means. So it's going to be the average of all of it. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to, we say reduce the within group sum of squares, or we just want to make the groups as, like the data within the groups as similar as possible. And we want to maximize the between group sum of squares, or we just want to make the different clusters or different groups. We want to make those as different as possible. So the process for k-means, it's pretty simple. It's an iterative process and it just goes until the model really never improves. So what we're gonna do first is we're just going to randomly place, you know, the amount of centroids that we've determined. So our k number of centroids, we're going to place that randomly among the data. And then we're just gonna go over these two steps right here. We're first just gonna assign each data point to the nearest cluster. And then we're going to recalculate the centroids of clusters using some math. So as you can see down here, our centroid was this square right here. And what it's going to do is it's going to move into the middle of the cluster essentially. And down here as well, moves into the middle of the cluster. And then we're going to recalculate everything again. So essentially we're just gonna assign each, cent each data point to the nearest centroid. And what's going to happen is it's just going to do this until the model doesn't improve or you can't reassign essentially. You can't make the within group sum of squares smaller and you can't make the between group sum of squares bigger. And another thing about k-means is that this is called a hard clustering. It's, it's a type of hard clustering. So essentially this means that an object can only belong to one cluster so as we can see down here, hard means that an object can only belong to one cluster, where compared to soft, it can belong to maybe this one right here, or it can belong to this one down here, like the red and orange are. And as well, like I mentioned before, the center of the object is the mean of the assigned objects. So the centroid right here would be just the mean of these two. The centroid in this one would be the mean right in here somewhere. And then as well, they don't overlap. So the clusters don't overlap as all. Well. That's why they're called hard clusters because there's a very hard line and hard defining def line between the clusters. So that's really a summary of k-means and what the concept behind k-means. There's a lot of good resources out here. This is a good book that you can read and it has the k-means 
um, to tour. It has a lot of K-means information on it. I read the K-means section on it. It's really good. And then um, YouTube as well has a lot of great tutorials, a lot of different ways to implement different things and different ideas, blogs as well that have a lot of different information on K-means. The cool thing about K-means is that it's really easy to understand and implement. So being able to implement it is really super simple, especially if you're doing it in Python or R. So that's really just a basic overview of K-means. If this video helped you at all, be sure to hit the like button. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks, and I'll catch you in the next one.